Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your awesomeness, and you thank you for blessing us so much. Yes. Amen. The Lord really desires for us to be free of condemnation, guilt, and shame. And we touched on this last week a little bit, and uh, you know, I just I, we just released a new teaching, I think, on Friday uh, on our on the on the uh, app and on the Roku channel um, about being free from condemnation. It's really good. But when we put ourselves back into that place of condemnation and, and guilt and shame, we're, we're putting ourselves, <clears throat> we're putting our past, really, between us and God. We're putting, we're putting guilt between us and God. When Jesus took our sin, he literally took our sin. He didn't do it. How much sin did Jesus commit? To become sinful on the cross? None. How much righteousness did I have to commit to become righteous? Isn't that amazing? (laughs) Isn't that amazing? That's, that's That's the exchange he made with us. He literally took, he took my sin on the cross and gifted me his righteousness. So I now I have a gift of righteousness. That's my, it's like he's given, it's my gift. He's given it to me, you know. Right. Like, I, you know, if I ever gave Melissa a gift, I can't think of anything. I, Did I give you that necklace? Praise the Lord, that's a good example. So I gave Melissa that necklace. I think my mother gave it. So Melissa's mom <laughs> gave her a necklace. <laughs> it's a gift. It's a gift from her mom. Right. Whose necklace is it now? Melissa's or Melissa's mom? Melissa's. It's Melissa's mom. Right. But her mom gave her the gift. Right. So whose righteousness is it now? It's mine. It's, it's your righteousness. It's, it's yours. Because he's given it to you. Right. He, wow. he gave you his righteousness. Yeah. Like it's your righteousness. Like it's yours. Wow. Yeah. That's so good. Ooh, well, you got it too, though. <laughs> <laughs> nobody has to be jealous. Of, nobody has to be jealous of Judy. All you got to do is receive this free gift. It's, it's, a, it's by grace. But by grace we have been saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. Right. When we when we go to that place of works, we're on. You know, we, we may go to that place of works um, through training or through we just really wanting to do a good job. And grace without works is dead. Okay, but works for grace doesn't make sense because then you turn grace into a wage, right? Then you're earning it. Doesn't, then right. there's no grace there. When we go to that place and we, we try to work for it, we're automatically putting ourselves back into that place of condemnation because right. we can never work for God, God's grace. Right. We'll never deserve it. Like never, ever. Yeah. Like never, ever. But, you know, First John 1, 12 says... Those who believe on the name of Jesus, he's given them the right to become the children of God. Yes. So Eva is my child. <laughs> and she's a very spirited child. Very spirited. Even, on the, even in those brief moments where she's really upset with me, because she doesn't understand, because she has an immature perspective, because she's a six-year-old, and she doesn't understand what 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 my heart's intentions are, or or what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do, or or, or maybe that thought or idea she has is actually super duper dangerous, and I'm protecting her from certain harm, and she gets really angry with me, and she's like, ah! you know, and I think she may have even said it some once or twice, maybe something to the effect of, "I wish you weren't my dad." Guess what happened in that moment, though? I was still her dad. <laughs> I was still her dad. It was the strangest thing. I'm like, wait, I'm still your dad. You just said that. I'm still your dad. It didn't change our relationship. So, because she is my child. She's, <laughs> she's, she's my child. And even if she gets angry with me, she's still my child. Exactly. Even if she's get, 
if she, even if she's like in a place of extreme misunderstanding and, 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 and she's going into that place of blame and she's, you know, feeling guilt and condemnation. And when you feel guilt and condemnation, even if you don't feel it, if you're, if you're dealing in it, if you're giving it out, it's because you got it. Because you can't give what you don't have. Okay? So even in those places or in those times, because it's a lack of maturity, she's still my daughter. She still has the rights and privileges of my child. Okay? She's still in relationship with me. She's still in right standing with me. I don't, and she, when she comes back to me, when she's like hugging me and kissing me and telling me I'm the best dad in the world, they don't say, well, wait a minute. I don't think you're my daughter anymore. Because in your infinite knowledge of a six-year-old mind, you thought I was a bad dad. How much more of a mature perspective does our Heavenly Father have? You know what I mean? I mean, so when we, when we fall into these places of guilt and condemnation and shame, you know, what we're doing is we're, we're putting our past in between, our, in, our, in the middle of our relationship with God. You know, what Jesus did on that cross is he put, he put him in the middle of that relationship. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus, in, in, okay, so Jesus put himself in, our, in that place so that we can have that relationship with God. He put his righteousness in that place, but then he put us in him. And he put him in us. And then he took our sin and he, he didn't just, sometimes we get this idea that Jesus took our sin, you know, like say this black is sin and then I get some red paint and I paint over it. Now my sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. No, it's like say this black is sin and I have the most powerful paint stripper in the world. And the blood of Jesus is that paint stripper because it just takes away the sin. Wow. There's just bare metal there. You know what I mean? And then that bare metal gets covered in the blood of Jesus. Because yeah. his, his blood doesn't wash, doesn't just like cover our sin, it cleanses it. Yeah. Wow. It washes it away. It gives us a new finish. In fact, we are a new species in Christ. Yeah. You know, we're, we're a new race. According to, you know, I heard Bill Winston say this and I thought, Wow. I don't mind quoting Bill Winston or trying to quote Bill Winston because <laughs> I'll probably get this not 100%. But according to the word of God, there are three races right now. There's the Jew, there's the Gentile, and there's the child of God. Okay? You are in one of those three categories. You're a Jew, you're a Gentile non-believer, or you're a child of God. That's your race now. You're a child of God. You have... become part of the heavenly family of God. But not like a great, great nephew, <laughs> but like a son and a daughter. Right. You're like direct connect. Right. Okay? You, <laughs> you're, not a, you're, you're not kind of in the family. You're not just getting in by, you know... As long as I, you know, I heard people say, well, as long as I make it to heaven, that's all I care about. Like they're going to come stumbling across the finish line. And <laughs> it's like, uh, you know what? You're already there. Right. You're already there. Yeah. You're already, we're already there. We're already fully in. You know, yeah. our job assignment is not to get ourselves into heaven. Right. Right. It's not it. <laughs> Jesus already has done that. Right. We are seated in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus right now, next to, the, uh, next to the throne of God. Like, that's where we're seated right now. We're, yeah, we're seated there right now. Yes. Our, our job assignment is now to get the heavenly kingdom of God yes. into this earth. Yes. Yes. You know, and, uh, and it comes with the transformation, the rethinking of our thoughts. Now, last week, we talked about taking dominion of your mind. We've got to take dominion of this thing so yeah. we can take dominion of the things outside of this place. Right. Because my body, you know, you, some of you heard that your body's an earth suit. I don't know if you ever heard that. Like, my body is like a, my body is like a house for my spirit on this earth, right? right? right. 
So my, our bodies, you know, Paul called them jars of clay, okay? So we, we, my, our bodies are jars of clay. Our, our, but our bodies, give us the, our bodies give us the authority to operate as, 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 as children of God on this earth, you know? Um, our, our bodies, you know, that's why Jesus said, unless somebody is born of, of uh, water and of the spirit, they can't enter the kingdom of God. You know, when a, when a baby is born, he's born in water. You know what I mean? The baby's born in water, right? The, right. Call it the water breaks. The baby's born in the water. And the baby's born in the spirit. You, can, you, have to be a, you have to be human to even be in this kingdom of God. Right. You have to be born human to be, you know, the, there's, the thief can't even get in this one, okay? <laughs> We're just going right. to put it like that. Satan can't sneak into the kingdom of God, all right? He has never been born of a woman. He's never been born of water. Right. So now you were born of water and you're born of the spirit. That your body is what gives you the, 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 the ability to operate in this physical realm here. However, we, our bodies give us the authority here, but our bodies only house our spirits. Our bodies are only this, this place where our spirits live, so we have access to this earth. We have, historically speaking, mankind has had limited access. You know what I mean? Like Moses lived to be 120 years. Okay, he had a 120-year window of access to this earth. You know, Jesus had 33 years, and in in his in his in his natural body, right. but he has from now until the kingdom come in full glory. You know, access through my body, right? Because his spirit's in me now, and his spirit's in you now. Right. But it's the body that gives the spirit access. Okay. Our bodies are meant to be homes for our spirit. Our bodies are meant to be, our bodies are meant to be healthy. <laughs> our bodies are meant to be strong. Our bodies, are, our, our bodies aren't supposed to be prisons for our spirit. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, in, in, in Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus talks about, but don't worry. Don't worry, you know, don't worry, be happy. That's pretty much what his message is there in the last part of that chapter. You know, don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. You're all, you know, don't worry. Your father knows what you need before you need it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And he says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things are going to come with it. Yes. Yeah, all these things come with it. Because the kingdom of God contains everything you need, wow. all right? But the, the kingdom of God is not an earthly kingdom. It's a, it's a heavenly kingdom, all right? But in the heavenly realm, in the spirit realm, in the spiritual realm, every resource for life and godliness is there. Yes. It is set aside for you. Yep. Every, every resource of heaven, because you have been blessed with every heavenly blessing, every blessing in heaven is yours for, for everything. Yeah. What, everything. It's in the spirit realm. Got it? It's in the spirit realm. You're in the, your body is in the natural realm. But by faith, we receive the abundance yeah. of grace yeah. The abundance of provision that is set aside, and it will manifest in this natural realm. Yes, yes. That's why we seek the kingdom first and receive the free gift of righteousness. Every resource we need is already in the heavenly realm. That's where our spirit is. That's where Jesus is. That's where we're seated. That's where we're seated. Every resource. I'm standing here right now. I'm standing here. I know you can see me. I'm standing here. <laughs> but I'm seated in heavenly places right now. Okay? Right. My position in Christ in the heavenly places, Colossians 3 says, set your mind, set your heart where Christ is seated, where you are hidden with him, not down here. My heavenly place has to be more real to me than my physical place. Otherwise, the struggle will manifest down here in my body. We call it hypertension, I think. <laughs> right? Let's be real here. I can tell when my mind is not here, when my mind is here or here or maybe here, I feel stressed. I feel anxious. I, in fact, I might not even feel it because I'm pretty good at not feeling things. 
emotionally. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty good at just being, I'll stay the course, suck it up. But I feel this thing called tension in my lower back. Am I lying? I'm being honest here. I feel it in my lower back, and it's just like, oh, what do I do to my back? And I got to stop and think, oh, wait. It's my anxiety that is causing my muscles to tense up. Right. You're a therapist, right? Is this not how it works? Yep. Yeah, professional. We got a professional person in the house who specializes. Yeah. But it's because I'm not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual, spiritual things. Yep. I'm supposed to be fighting it up here in the spirit realm. But if I, my mind is beginning, you know, I'm not, Jesus said, don't worry. And I'm just like, I'm not, well, I'm not worried. <laughs> but I'm walking around all tensed up and my back is, that's a sign for me that I've been fighting it in the wrong place. Wow. Okay. I've been fighting it in the wrong wow. place. Now, if we run into conflict with people, amen. <laughs> yeah. Stop me if I go too far, baby. If we run into conflict with people, I'm careful. <laughs> Especially Christians. Come on. <laughs> now, I talked about this a little bit last week about, like, I'll see somebody whose lights come on, and they're like, oh, you know, they get, like, a revelation. Usually it's around, Facebook is usually around healing. Like, God wants to heal everybody. And, like, every member from the church that they're at or currently at or the church that they're about to get kicked out of or whatever you want to say, <laughs> posts online, how dare you say this? This is evil. You're bringing condemnation upon every sick person. And it's like, wow. You know, you just see, like, people just get all upset, and they're just, you know. Yeah. And he's just like, I see this person just getting eaten up on Facebook, and I'll be like, I'll try not to stir the pot too much. But I'll say, usually send them a private message if I have, if I see it. They're like, hey, just, you know, quote everybody, just send them some scripture. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I hear this frequently still, praise the Lord, more frequently than I care. Um, <laughs> well, when you get old, you can expect your body to wear out. You can expect your health to decline. Wow. And then you say, well, what verse is that? <laughs> <laughs> and if they're on their game, they say, well, 70 or 80 years. You know, they start quoting from the Psalms. And then you can say, oh, do you know that's for the disobedient children of Israel who are cursed to die in the desert and not for you? And they'll say, oh. You know what I mean? And it's just, kind of, it's just kind of over. And it's like, whoa, you just brought somebody revelation. It's not there. You know what I mean? It's not because they were like, they're believing what they've been taught, you know? Right. right. But you know better. Right. And we don't, we're not, I'm not wrestling with that person. I'm wrestling with the spiritual influence that has influenced oh, them to think that good. God's will is for them to get sick and die. Right. Because that's demonic, you know? That's, just, yeah. that's the principality and power that has exerted influence over doctrine that's causing God's church to be sick and anemic when the rest of the world, you know, people are getting ready to run marathons when they're 80. I mean, literally. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a world, and we're just like, oh, 70 or 80 years, Lord, come take me home. I'm still here. What's wrong? You know, it's, it's, right. we got to renew our minds, yeah. okay? Yeah. We, we got to renew our minds. We can't think this way anymore. But we got to remember that we're not wrestling against... Pre- we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Right. We're wrestling against principalities and powers. And we'll, we, we, we got the word of God. You know, I just say, well, so, show me that in the word. You don't got to be mean about it. You be nice about it and smile and bless them. Yeah. And bless them. Don't get upset. Don't be like, don't, don't be down here and like, I'm going to, uh, I got, you know, I got I to gotta convince John of something. So I'm just going to argue. I'm like, hey, man, show me that in the word. Okay. Oh, what about this? You know, just kind of quoting the scripture. And, right. and, 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 and in that doing, not making it a conflict. You know what I mean? Because when we make it a conflict, we're putting ourselves in a fight that we're not supposed to be in. Exactly. You know, Gary talked about that, that. We're not supposed to have strife. We just share the word. We just share, and we be positive about it. Right. You know, and we don't have to go into this place of anxiety and tension and yeah. just share the word, share the word, and, and, and do it in joy and do it in peace and do it in happiness. Yeah. And, and as, we share, as, we share this, as we share this message of victory, okay, because that's what this is really about. This is about victory. Yes. This, is about, yes. this is about not, yes. not compromising. Yes. You know, and this is about not compromising. I got to say this, though. It is, it is about not compromising, but it's not about being, it's not about being um, unnecessarily um, confrontational. <laughs> but at the same time, like if somebody says to me, well, you know, you're just going to get sick, blah, blah, blah. And if I, just, if I don't leave that, if I just let that hang out there, I just can't. I have to say, that's not for me. 
You know what I mean? Because yeah, right. my subconscious mind, if my mind, my, you have a conscious mind and you have a subconscious mind. We'll keep it real simple. If your subconscious mind hears somebody say, speak a word curse over you like that, and they don't hear the truth, your subconscious mind doesn't hear the truth, if it hears it enough times, it's going to start to take that as, as, as a non-contested yeah. fact. Right. Okay? Right. So if they say, well, you know, you know you're just going to end up broke. If, I don't, if, I don't, if my subconscious mind hears that and says, there is no, con- there is no truth being spoken, it's going to receive that as truth. So if somebody speaks a word curse over me, I have to say, that's not for me. You know, and I might quote some scripture or say, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. You know, I, or, well, you forget everything. No, I don't. The memory of the righteous is blessed. And I don't care what I just forgot. Right. You know, I don't care what I just forgot. I'm not coming into agreement with that. Right. But I'm not going to do it in a mean-spirited thing because I'm, right. I'm going to do it in, 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 a, in a nice, yes. non-contentious way. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> because here's the thing. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 6.33, he said, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be added unto you. What are all these things? Everything we need for life. Everything. Not just need, okay, but desire. Because this kingdom is not a kingdom based on need. Because if it was based on need alone, every believer would have every need met in the natural realm. Every, need, every, every believer's need is already met in the supernatural realm, in the spiritual realm. But it's the desire and the belief, the faith, that draws it into, this, into the natural realm. So it's all contained in the kingdom already. I don't have to go outside of God's kingdom to get anything I need. Because right. Right. it's already there. Matthew 6, 3, it's already there. I don't have to go outside of the kingdom to get abundance of finances. I don't have to go outside of the kingdom to get, if I was single, to get a mate. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to go outside of the kingdom for anything because it's all inside the kingdom of God. Right. You know, every need, every desire I have is to be met inside that spiritual reality called the kingdom of God. But it's by faith that I begin to see the manifestation come into reality. However, if I continue to live my life in a place of guilt and condemnation and shame, I am never going to see the manifestation of these realities because I'm always living in the past. Right. All right? I'm always living in the past, and I'm never stepping into the future. And I have to receive this as my current reality right now. Otherwise, I'm never going to get to the place I'm supposed to be. Ephesians 4.29 talks about not to speak in, um, not, not to let any coarse speak or speech or ungodly speech come out of my mouth, but, but, but speaking edification, edifying words to impart grace to the hearers, right. all right? Imparting grace to the hearers. So when I speak words of edification, I impart grace to the hearers. When I speak words of edification over myself, I am imparting grace to myself. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Romans 5, 17 says, For if by the transgression of the one death reigned through the one, that's talking about Adam, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. There's two things here that you, we can clearly see. One is to reign, okay, to reign in life in Christ Jesus, I have to receive an abundance of grace. Okay, I have to receive an abundance of grace. And I have to receive the gift of righteousness. Two things I have to do. Receive an abundance of grace and receive the gift of righteousness. The words I am speaking to you right now are imparting grace unto you. Right. All right, I'm not here to give you information or even revelation today. I'm here to give you impartation of grace. Wow. Everything you need is already in this word. It's already it's in the word. It's in the heavenly realm. It's already set aside for you. Everything. The scripture says where, where sin abounds. Grace abounds even more. I'm going to tell you something else. Where sickness abounds, healing abounds even more. Yes. 
Where poverty abounds, abundance abounds even more. Where depression abounds, joy abounds even more. This is the kingdom. Because wherever you see the lack in this natural realm, there is an overcompensation already set aside in the supernatural realm. And that's already set aside for you. So where sin abounds, there's an abundance of grace, oh, even more, even greater grace. There's an even greater grace set aside for healing. Whatever the sickness is, it doesn't matter. Whatever the, whatever the manifestation of, of the kingdom of darkness is, it doesn't even matter because the kingdom of light abounds even more. It abounds even more. There is a grace set aside for this. But the key for us as believers, one, I have to receive that righteousness as a gift. Wow. I'm righteous. Like, it's my gift. Just like that necklace is Melissa's gift from her mom. Like, my righteousness is, the, is, the, is, is a gift from God. He gave me his righteousness, and I get to call it my own. But until I take ownership of it, is it really mine? Okay? It's my righteousness. My righteousness. And guess what? You can't touch my righteousness. Because <laughs> it's my righteousness. You can try to heap as much guilt, condemnation, and shame on me as you want, but guess what? I'm still righteous. <laughs> the devil can try to do whatever he wants, but guess what? I am still righteous. In fact, I can even screw up. I could even get mad at God and say, I wish you weren't even my daddy. Guess what? Guess whose son I still am? Yeah. Yeah. Guess who's still righteous? Yeah, it's me. Because, I mean, like, how much righteousness did I commit to become righteous? None. So how much unrighteousness do I have to commit to become unrighteous? I can't. It doesn't work that way. I can't. All right? Yeah, it's, this, is pretty, this is pretty wild. Now, if I do screw up, my conscience is violated. Okay? Because a king's throne is established in righteousness. That's what it tells us in Proverbs. My place of ruling and reigning is violated. I'm not going to come in with authority. However, if I confess my sins to the Lord, I say, oh, Lord, I repent. I really screwed this up. Thank you, Jesus. Guess what he does? He cleanses my conscience. He cleanses me of all unrighteousness. He puts me back in that spot. And if I let him, he te- if I let him, he'll put me back and he'll, he'll pick me back up. He'll sit me back on that throne and say, well, there you are, son. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome back. Yeah. Just like the prodigal son. Yeah. The guy still smelt like pig poop. Okay? And, his, and the father, who's, who's God, is God, the father is God. We know this is putting the robe of righteousness on him and putting the ring of authority on his finger and saying, this is my son. Welcome back. Wow. Wow. That's how it is for us. So I got to take this righteousness, this gift, and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then I got to receive this abundance of grace that's already available to me. One of the ways, and we talked about it last week, I can stay in that abundance of grace. And we talked about last week the, the seven ways, what was it, five ways, five ways, seven ways. I don't remember. It was a really good message. I'll have to watch it again. It was super good. Was it five or seven? I'm not going to ask you because I don't want the wrong answer. Seven? Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> but the, the, I think the first, the first five really had to do directly with like, they all had to do with the word, but the first, the first five really had the, the direct application of apply, like taking the word, taking the word, taking the word, taking the word. And then we went to uh, affirmation and declaration. Yeah. When I get to that place of declaration, I am releasing grace to myself. Yeah. Okay? My words are like, con- like containers of grace. You ever play paintball? You know, little balls or containers of paint. You get them, bam, they break, and they kind of hurt, if they're, especially if it's cold. Um, that's what my words are like. They're like little containers of grace. And when I hit somebody with them, pop, they got grace on them. 
Grace. Oh, wow. I just graced you. <laughs> I just graced you. I graced you. But I can grace me too. When I say, I am blessed and highly favored. Amen. I am, I also, I, I've been really speaking some great things about myself this morning. I've been telling you guys that I am, a, I am the righteousness of Christ. Like, my, my, I'm, he, I'm hearing this, and it's like, wow, this sounds too good to be true. But it, this is why they call it the gospel, because it's yes. too good to be true news. It but it's almost, but it can't be true without Jesus. Amen? Amen. Because of Jesus, this is true. Right. So my, 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 my spirit is being edified. My mind is being renewed because I'm releasing grace. I'm releasing grace to you because you're hearing this. Yes. And this is, this is grace. This is an abundance of grace. There is no limit to the amount of grace you can release upon yourself through declarations. Amen. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Amen. You know, some people are like, oh, I don't have any grace. You know, or you're, you're, you're starving, you're, you're thirsty. Start releasing the grace of the word over your life. Amen. Start declaring this, this truth of Scripture over your life. Yes. Your words literally are life and death. Yes. That is, that's what Proverbs says. Your words are life and death, yes. and you're going to eat the fruit of those words. Yes. Yes. You want to eat some good fruit? I want to eat grace fruit. I'll, i got to speak grace over myself. Yes. You know, i can't, I got I to gotta stop cursing myself and start... And start blessing myself. Wow. <clears throat> I, I remember, I don't remember who I heard him say. I, I, this, it was a revelation to me. Uh, somebody said, you need to bless yourself. And I thought, well, that's weird. I want to bless myself. I'm just going to tell you this. You need to bless yourself. I started blessing wow. myself. And man, is it yeah. good. I am so blessed. It's amazing. <laughs> I say, I bless me. I bless me in the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, I just bless myself. Because it's the, the grace is in those words. The power is in yes, those words. Yes. When I declare God's precious promises of Scripture over myself, I am releasing the abundance of grace to participate in the divine nature wow. I have been given through oh, Christ. Goodness. Okay? Wow. I, I need this grace in my life. You can't depend on coming in on a Sunday morning and hearing somebody say it for you. Wow. Okay? You can't depend on BVOVN, although it's amazing, Believer's Voice of Victory Network, you know, or, or Kenneth Copeland or Bill Winston. You got to, I mean, you got to, you've got to, I mean, if you haven't been listening to these guys, I encourage you to listen to them because they're awesome, you know. But you got to start to feed yourself, you know. Yeah. You got to start to declare this stuff. This stuff's got to start to roll out of your own mouth, out of your own tongue. Yeah. And, out, and, and, and you're, hearing, you're hearing yourself say this, and yeah. your mind is going to say, Wow. This must be true. Because <laughs> it's one thing to hear somebody else say it about you, but when you say it over yourself, it's like, whoa. Right. So as we go forward in this, man, we got to, one, receive the righteousness because the righteousness is already there, all right? right. It's just, are you receiving it? Right. Have you received yes. it? And once I yes. get it, like once I get it, like it's mine. Yes. I'm not giving it up. I'm not giving it up. You're not taking it from me. The devil's not taking it from me. Jesus is certainly not taking it back because he gave it to me. Amen. Right. <laughs> it's, it's mine. I own this righteousness, and I'm going to take yeah. care of it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but then i got to take that grace, all that grace that's available through the word of God. Yeah. And if there's an area where I'm lacking, if there is an area where I'm lacking faith or lacking breakthrough, I got to go back and see, have I been applying the grace of God to that area? Wow. Okay? <clears throat> and it's great to take teachings, and it's great to say, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the great amazing things about teachings, you know, whether it's uh, living in victory, our, our teachings, or the express image, or, you know, any, anything by Bill Winston or Kenneth Copeland or any of those guys, is that they're going to teach you something, but they're going to give you the scriptural foundation, yeah. and then you get to take that back, and you get to start digging into it and say, wow. Wow, you know, yeah. but, you're, yeah. but the word is a sure, solid foundation. Yeah. And then when I, if, I need an, if I need an area of breakthrough in my life, I, f I can go out and I can find a teaching that corresponds with that area, or I can, just, I can just Google search scripture, or I can just go into my thesaurus and whatever, and then I find those scriptures that pertain to that area of need that I have, yeah. and there's, there's, well, there's some things lacking, but the bottom line is it's going to be a, an issue of faith. I don't have faith. I don't have grace. I haven't received that grace in that area, or I haven't, the faith hasn't manifested in that area. But it's all going to come down to how have I planted the word in that area? Yes, yes. 
Have I planted the word? Have I released that word over myself? And, what, and, and I'm telling you, we, we, get to, we get to control this, amen? Right. <laughs> we get to renew our minds. Right. It's not on, well, I guess if the Lord's willing, he'll renew my mind. Oh, he's willing, all right. <laughs> he's willing. He wrote a book for you. <laughs> he's willing, all right. He gave you his Holy Spirit. He put it inside you. Man. And, it, and, then, and then for people like me who have taken a while... He's given us the ability to, pre, to, to speak in tongues. Yeah. So we can just, you know what, man, my, you know, if you, it, was, it was great. It was, it's, it was it's always great. But I'll tell you what, before I really started renewing my mind, I cannot even tell you how many blessings I think I received by praying in tongues because I got my mind out of the way. Right. Amen. I saw, so I'm just going to pray in the spirit. You know, right. in my mind, I'm like, oh, Lord, I don't know what to do. But my spirit man is like, you know, it's like telling this. My spirit man is in a direct communion with the Lord. He's speaking that perfect will. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, it, I tell you what, there, I'm sure there have been many times where I was just better off to not even say anything in English because my, <laughs> my natural mind, my unrenewed mind was so far out of the. Right. So you want me to do what? <laughs> you know? Well, my spirit's already got the full download and knows exactly how I'm going to do it and what's going to happen. And, you know, so I'm just, but, as we, but that's not the way it has to stay. You know what I mean? We get to renew our minds so that we get to become transformed. So that we can become transformed and our mind is renewed. But we do this through the precious promises of Scripture. Man, it's this, oh, praise the Lord. This is the Word of God. This is the, this is the two-edged sword. This is like, this is the sword of the spirit. You know, when we go to when we go to war, yep. man. Yep. This is the battlefield, That's right. right here. <clears throat> There's a battle out here, but the main I gotta win this one first. Yep. I gotta win this one first, right. and I do that with the word of God. Yeah. I do that with the, the spirit of the Lord and the word of God and the revelation of Jesus Christ coming through this word, yes. showing me who I am in Him and who He is in me. Yeah. And there is nothing, nothing, there is literally nothing that can stop me. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Like nothing. The only thing that can, the only thing that can stop me is me. Right. That's the only thing that can stop me. Yep. The only thing that can stop me is me and having an unrenewed mind. That's right. But to, let's be quite honest with you. That is only a temporary delay for however many years I'm alive here. Because <laughs> <Okay>. <Right. laughs> ultimately we're all unstoppable. But I got a limited time opportunity here on this earth. Because remember, Jesus came because God so loved this world. You know what I mean? He brought, Jesus brought the battle to this world because he loves it and he loves the people that he created on it. So this is our battle right here. We've already won in heaven. We have already won in heaven. 100%. It's already done. That's 100% done. Exactly. We've already won. However, I want to see the fullness of that manifestation here on earth. I want to see the fullness of that manifestation yes. here on earth. So bad. Yes. So bad. I just want to yes. see it. Amen. Did we come up? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just have to say this. I just really feel like the Lord is crazy about you. He is just so excited right now. He has so much love for you right now. He has like this extravagant love for you right now. He is excited. He has plans and he has purpose for you. Yes. He has a destiny for you and he sees it. He sees it right now. You have the seed of greatness in you right now. It is already there. Your purpose is already set. The plans are already made. And God is so excited for you to to, to take this journey with you. The battle is already won. The victory is already yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The abundance of grace has already been a given. And as we continue to go, 
it's not a matter of his giving, it's a matter of our receiving. It's, it's a matter of our receiving. As we continue to receive his abundance, receive his mercy, receive his grace, receive his righteousness, there are no limits. There are no limits in God. There are no limits in Christ Jesus. There is no end to his goodness. There is no end to his grace. His righteousness is established in you through the word of God. His righteousness is going to reign in your life through the word of God. And because you are, you are going to stand in his righteousness and you are going to stand in his word, you are going to reign in life. Yep, there's a, you're going to reign in that. You're going to reign forever and, and, and you're going to reign for eternity with Christ Jesus. But that reign begins today. Your kingdom reign begins today. Right now. You are supernatural royalty. You are a child of divinity. You are a child of God. All that he has is yours, and it's for you, and it's for right now, and it's for today. He wants to bless you so much. He's going to pour it on you so he can pour it through you. <laughs> He's going to pour it on you so he can pour it through you. He loves you. He loves your family. He loves your wife. He loves your husband. He loves your children. He loves your parents. He loves all your friends. He even loves the people you don't like. <laughs> oh, Jesus, you're so good. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Mm. So today, let's just commit. I, I really, I'm committed to receiving an abundance of grace in my life. I am committed to it. <laughs> I am committed to it. I am committed to standing steadfast in my righteousness in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And this is going to be a church of victory. It's going to be a place of victory. It's going to be a place of grace. Yes, 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 it's going to be a place of righteousness because we're standing on the sure foundation of his word and the revelation of Jesus Christ in that. So I'm just going to bless you right now in the name of Jesus. I speak the blessing and the favor of the Lord over each and every person here, each and every person who can hear this right now. I speak the blessing and the favor of the Lord over your life right now. And you just receive it by faith because God's grace is without limit over you right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.